Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I want to go over RetroPie updates and tackle some of the misconceptions about RetroPie updates so we can better determine whether or not we should actually update our system or leave it exactly as it is. So I want to start off by saying that uh, I have no intention of criticizing or firing shots at the amazing people that work tirelessly uh, behind the scenes on these RetroPie updates. I have nothing but the utmost respect for people that dedicate their time to provide um, a better system for all of us to use. So I think that the biggest misconception that people constantly make about RetroPie updates is that a new update becomes available and we have to immediately jump onto our system and rush to update you know, right away in order to maintain a system that runs smoothly. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So updates aren't like getting an oil change on our car every couple thousand miles. Um, we don't need to update in order to maintain our system. We only need to update if we're trying to gain something that just became available on the new update. For example, uh, maybe you have an outdated version of RetroPie on your system currently and it runs great, but uh, maybe they have a new emulator out or they're now able to um, put out an emulator that can play additional games that you weren't able to get previously. That would be a good reason to go about doing an update on your system because now you know for a fact that you're going to gain access to additional uh, emulators or, or content in some way that you weren't able to do with your current um, RetroPie software. So that would be a good reason to go about initiating an update and committing to it, but you need to know that that is going to be the case and that you can guarantee that you're going to be able to gain something from your update. Another good reason to update would be if you're having an, some sort of issue with your current setup, you know, maybe you're um, experiencing some issues with some settings or, or something like that and you know that updating your system is going to fix these problems or at least has a chance of fixing these problems. You don't want to go blindly into an update um, especially if you have a system that's working really well. Now RetroPie used to do um, detailed reports on their updates and they would talk about what the updates intentions are, what the purpose of it is and give you kind of a detailed list of exactly what to expect and what is going to um, improve on your system. They have not been doing that for like the last seven or eight updates so it does leave you going into these updates pretty blind um, and makes them much more of a gamble. You're essentially rolling the dice hoping for um, your system to come out of an update running smoother than it was going into it. And that's not always the case. You actually have just about as much chance of it coming out running poorly or um, worse than it was before as much as you have a chance of it coming out running better. We recently ran into this issue um, after the 4.71 update. I think it was the 4.7.2 update where uh, we went and did the update and our PlayStation games actually stopped working. And for about two weeks, everybody had an issue where you could no longer control any of your PlayStation games from any gamepad controller, which is really frustrating. We luckily were able to go in and find out exactly what the settings changes were on that update just by comparing a side-by-side -side comparison of the 4.7.1 settings in RetroArch for the PlayStation games um, along with the settings that were now um, into effect on the new updated version. So we were able to see the difference, make those changes, and get the new updated version working. So we did put out a video and it got thousands of views. It didn't get thousands of views because we promoted it or anything like that. It got thousands of views because everybody was experiencing this problem and it was really frustrating. So that kind of soured me towards doing these updates um, blindly because we were you know, trusting that each update is going to better our system and in that instance it obviously didn't. And eventually they came out with a update that actually solved that problem, but it was about two weeks later. So for two weeks, everybody, um, unless they found our video that walked through how to get those PlayStation games working again, weren't able to access those games. So that's a really frustrating experience for everybody. Um, there was some recent updates where audio settings were altered too, and it made different audio configurations much harder to navigate through. And um, in some cases, people were, were not having audio for a while until people were able to figure out, oh, this is what we need to change in order to, you know, get those audio issues solved on the most recent update. So situations like that definitely can cause some problems and, um, you know, you want to make sure that you don't run into a situation where now you made this update, you ran into some problems, and now you have to keep updating to try and solve these problems and essentially get your system back running to the um, performance level that it was, you know, three, four, five updates ago. So. Situations like that definitely can be frustrating for everyone, and we don't want to get into that situation if we can obviously avoid it. Now, in my opinion, the 4.7.1 update 
was a really great update for RetroPie. It now enabled us to play RetroPie on the brand new Raspberry Pi 400, which was a huge advancement for RetroPie. And I think a lot of people took advantage of utilizing it on that system. Now, whether playing long term on that system is a, is a good idea, you know, that's a topic for another day. But um, it was still nice to be able to have that option, especially if you spent you know, money uh, investing in the Raspberry Pi 400. So now that being said, a lot of the um, updates that came after that, in my opinion, were not great. They, a lot of them caused a lot of problems. And I think that's why we saw, um, typically we don't see a lot of updates in short periods of time. Uh, but we did see after the 4.7.1, we did see a lot of updates. I think we're on the 4.7.8 now. And just that was just in a couple months. So that's a lot of updates to go through. And I think that the reason for the, all those updates was each update, while it might have solved a small error or issue of some kind, it also created a lot of issues. So then you're constantly having to go in, update the system again. Everybody updates their system. Now we solve this problem, but now we have this problem. And then it's a vicious cycle that keeps repeating itself. So now I've found that we are in a place where the current update is working really well. But... For anybody like myself that went through that process of now we've done like six updates to try to get our system running as well as it did, you know, seven updates ago, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really add up and it can be really frustrating. So I think that the biggest takeaway from this video is going to be that we need to follow the rule of if it's not broke, don't fix it. If we have a system that works really well, everything's running smoothly, and we're happy with it, there's absolutely no reason that we need to go in and update anything. We should only be updating. If to utilize something that comes from that update. If we know for a fact that um, a new emulator comes out and we want to take advantage of that, we want to eventually go in and add ROMs that we can utilize that emulator to play more games, that's a great reason to go about updating it. It's worth the risk of potentially falling into an issue where, you know, now we've gotten access to that, but we have the issue of, you know, in the case of the PlayStation games, they're not working. So then maybe it's worth that two week period before we can get to another update that now solves that problem. However, if you have a system that works great, you're not looking to get more games or emulators or whatever that new update brings to you, then there's no reason to go down that road at all. So I wanna just do this video today because I wanted to go through this and try to straighten everything out and give people a little bit more insight into updates and why we would potentially be updating in general. You know, I think that everybody's got this idea that a new update came out and we have to now update our system in order to maintain it and keep it running smoothly. We don't actually have to do that. If we don't update our system ever again for the rest of our lives, it's gonna stay exactly the same as it, as it is right now. You know, if we update to the next version, we aren't actually able to go back and restore it to the previous version. We're gonna to have to keep moving forward, which you know can put us in that situation, as I explained, where you're constantly having to update your system and hopefully get it back to where it was. So all that being said, I hope that this gives you a little bit of insight so you can better decide whether or not an update is worth it for your system or if you want to just stay with the system and the version of RetroPie that you're currently working off of. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to walk through all that. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here. We do a whole bunch of different um, gameplay demos, reviews, um, tutorials and then I think we're going to start talking about some issues like this that keep coming up and you know people are having some trouble with. All right so that being said be sure to check us out online as well www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.